This is the third and final video in my How to Preserve Raw Tomatoes Without Cooking, Canning, or Freezing, making this beautiful raw fermented tomato paste. My name is Corinne Phillips, and this is Fresh Pea Cooks. If you haven't seen the two previous videos, I'll put a link to them here, and I'll also list them with the full recipe below this video. Just click show more and you'll see the whole thing. Okay, so today's the day, the reveal of what this beautiful paste looks like. Now, I didn't mean to leave you guys on a cliffhanger last time. I actually showed, I, I thought I shot footage of what it looked like with my overhead camera and um, I didn't get it for whatever reason. I don't know if the camera was full and it shut off or I just didn't push the button when I thought I did. So I didn't mean to leave you hanging on that. But today is the day where I show you what's going on. Before I reveal the tomato paste um, experiment, I have to tell you uh, that this did not go quite as planned. Now, what happened was five days ago, I was learning a new software program and I was struggling with it and I needed a break. So I went outside to capture one of my chicks because a little bit of snuggling with one of my chicks always makes me feel much better. It's kind of like my de-stress. And I was running around chasing this chick and my, my back went out and I was like, ah, <laughs> glad I'm hollering. Like, and he had to help me in the house. So the last four days, I've laid on the floor and on the couch, unable to sit and really unable to stand or do a whole lot. So. In those four days, my tomato experiment got totally ignored. My sourdough bread was completely ruined. Um, what else did I have? Oh, I had th three cases of peaches and nectarines I had to just slice and freeze. I couldn't make jam and preserve them. And so, so I'm very sad that that happened because this was, what, a week and a half, two weeks worth of <laughs> work? And it was being pressed for a day or two. So for those of you that aren't up to speed that are maybe finding this video for the first time, I'll put the links to, to one and two over here. In the last episode, I had run this through a tomato mill, so it removed the seeds and the skin, and it was this really, really um, concentrated tomato, sweet, beautiful sauce kind of pulp. It almost had the consistency of dough. and the theory is to press it for a day or two then you add salt the salt preserves the tomato paste so you can just leave it in your cupboard on your counter at room temperature indefinitely it's basically so salty it's about 25 percent salt that it preserves the tomato paste well this had been um, pressing for a day before my back went out and twice i had moved it throughout the day just to keep moisture um, from collecting and I wanted to move it to a dry piece of wood so I had done that the second day it smelled fantastic um, and then that's when my back went out and basically it sat here for f five days untouched I didn't look at it I didn't think of it I just wanted to get better and yesterday I came in the kitchen and I knew as soon as I walked to the kitchen this smell of decay and it was a smell that was so far removed from that beautiful, fresh, sweet tomato <laughs> smell. And I knew what it was. I was like, oh no. And yeah, it's, it's so stinky. I don't even want to look inside of it. It's, it's molding and it's, it's gone bad. So <laughs> 14 pounds of tomatoes and what, 10 days worth of work, um, over. The problem is, is <laughs> I'm going to visit a girlfriend in a couple days, and so I don't have time to start this over and make a third part until I return home. So I'm going to do that this fall. You will have your third part because I want my tomato paste, and it was so promising for so long. So, yeah, sad. Sometimes doing things on video doesn't always turn out, and many of my cooking fail failures are where I learn my... Um, most memorable lessons from. So lesson, note to self, don't press this for more than a day. 
And I was talking to Mariah, who makes this, has made this the last couple of years, and she said she salts it right after she runs it through the mill, so she doesn't press it between boards. So this option, I don't know how dangerous this option is of having something wet be pressed in between boards when it's really hot out. Um, that might not be something that you want to do. That might not be something I do. So next time I might just go straight from um, hanging it for two days and then put salt and call it good. So there will be a part four to this video. It will just take me a while to get to it. So sad day in the kitchen. So that was the lesson learned. When I have a kitchen failure, which is actually quite often um, because I do a lot of recipe testing and you can't really learn making stuff right the whole way. You, I always want to push the limits and know how much is too much and to see, um, play around with recipes. So I tend to bake after I've had a recipe failure and I have a very good reason to bake today. Um, there are five, over 550 firefighters in an encampment just north of us, and they're fighting the Mount Adams blaze, which I don't know how many thousands of acres, but tens of thousands of acres are burning out of control. We've had the hottest summer on record, and we live in a place that is notorious, world famous for windsurfing because it's a gorge, and there's a desert and an ocean, and the wind just funnels through where we live, so it's very windy, and the winds have been relentless. Um, we had lightning storms, and and our whole state seems like it's on fire. So there's 550 wildland firefighters, men and women, camp just about 15, 20 minutes north of me. And we, um, a friend of mine, went up there and talked to the fire chief and asked what we could do as a community. And so we put a um, kind of like shout out up on Facebook and we're rallying things for the firefighters. And so baked goods are allowed. Fresh fruit, unfortunately, is not allowed. Um, so I'm going to be baking something from my grandmother, who was an amazing cook, um, to take up to those men and women who are risking their lives to keep us all safe and protect our forests. So that video is going to be shot as consolation and I'll go ahead and release these at the same time so you at least have something to watch. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all your enthusiasm about the tomato paste and if you want to see more fermenting recipes and you want to see more um, fermenting <laughs> experiments I should say let me know and leave me a comment below and I will see you over here making something from my grandma. You'll have to go over there and check it out. Tomato-y conserve is really, really con um, condensed. What do you, no, what's the word I'm looking for? It's really, really um, Concentrated. <laughs> Start over. When I, right after, in the last episode, I had taken the seeds, and in the last episode, I'd run this 